All right. We are on the draw in match one of this league. Let's keep. This hand looks quite nice. Find out what the opponent's up to. Urs is mine. All right. Into Chromatic Star. Well, at least it isn't an expedition map. That's a win. In my book, that's a win. Are we going to hold up Stubborn Denial to counter on Ancient Stirrings? The fact that the opponent played a Chromatic Star means with almost 100% likelihood... Yeah, that's the noun. Uh, I'm almost certain that the opponent's not playing Eldrazi Tron. That deck doesn't run Chromatic Stars. Doesn't run Eggs. Doesn't use the cantripping for consistency method of finding Tron. It just has like eight ways to totally wreck your day. That's how it wins. I think we're going to grab a Steam Vents here and cast a Serum Visions. Don't really care about the shocking here because our life total is not important. I would love to have Thought Scour. That would make my day. I'd also love to play some baubles. Do I want to play both? I could always just not crack if I feel like not cracking is the way to go. In case the opponent's on green black Tron and main decking some thought seizes, we're probably not going to use bobble yet. On their turn, we'll crack at least one. Not sure if I want to crack the second. I probably don't. Now, if I crack both, I'll have four cards in the bin, and we can't go Mandrills hold up denial, so it's probably worth it to crack precisely one Thought Scour, the opponent with a mine on top, sure. We're gonna Thought Scour ourselves to play a clean Mandrills, no stubborn denials available, unfortunately. Or, or, we just play Goyf. What do you guys think of that? Tarmogoyf? Sounds pretty good. Sounds pretty good. Um, Goyf or Mandrills? We don't know what colors the opponent's playing in their Tron deck yet. Almost certainly green. The splash, though, we're not aware of. We can go Scour into Mandrills. Takes away basically all our options. Or we just go Goyf. I think I'm gonna go just Goyf. We're a little more vulnerable to Relic this way, but we still have the Bobble, we still have the Thought Scour, so we're not really vulnerable to Relic at all. So that part doesn't matter. If the opponent goes Karn minus, because I feel like they just have Natural Tron, yeah they do, the opponent didn't do anything, so it seemed pretty likely they just had Tron. If they go Karn here, and they minus the Tarmogoyf. We can just finish off the Karn with a Lightning Bolt. Go Mandrills, hold up Denial. They're taking out our green source. Oh dear, is that smart. Look at them go. That suggests to me that they have at least one more Karn coming. Oh, the opponent's name is Venzer Karn 925 Maybe we should have expected Tron. I could scry with the bobble, but I don't really want a thought scour because we're going to be light on lands. So I'm going to take a look at what they're going to draw. It's a worm coil engine. All right. That makes holding up denial significantly worse. That makes me want to attack the Karn, take it out that way, and just mana leak the follow up. Now they are going to have an Urza's mine coming down. Which means they'll have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 mana. This costs 6 and lets them get past Mana Leak. So what do we do here? Ah, looks like we're just in a bad spot. The opponent troned too soon, too easily. They didn't need to give up any resources to do it. Um... Ah, they did actual nothing but play Tron Lands and play a Chromatic Star. They didn't even crack it. They went Star on turn one. Okay, now I'm just going to Tron you. If we play Delver of Secrets, that's actually not bad. Playing Delver of Secrets. The opponent could Ulamog us if they have an Urza's Tower on top. But that's not that huge of a consideration. Let's take out Karn.
If we suspect the opponent to play a Karn, I want to hold up Mana Leak. If we think they're just going to go Worm Coil, I want to have played this Delver. So that hopefully the Aberration could start doing work. However, we do have Thought Scour. And it's highly likely the opponent has more payoff in hand. Given that they went after the Breeding Pool and accepted the fact that Karn would die to Goyf. So I feel like they have something better to do than a Worm Coil. Now they might play around us having Mana Leak, but they also we have 6 cards in hand. I feel like the opponent's not going to assume we have literal nothing going on, so they might decide they want to play around Mana Leak, I don't know. At the very least we get to Thought Scour, which is something. Having Thought Scour makes me a lot more likely, generally speaking, to go for the hold up counter line just because we have a backup. Worm coil is going to resolve. Can't stop that. Let them go to end step so they can't get a relic down. And I'm going to Thought Scour. Stubborn Denial. Not very good. Goyf's a 5-6. That's a start. I'm going to play out two Delvers and hope the opponent doesn't have a Sweeper. Because it's pretty unlikely we win this game without relying extraordinarily heavily on these two Delvers. Over to you, opponent. No need to attack into that Worm Coil. If they do have a Sweeper, we're basically dead. But we were basically dead regardlessly. I mean, we could have held up Stubborn Denial. Oh, jeez, we had Stubborn Denial. Alright, well, it's just Karn. Which is actually great. I should have held up a Stubborn Denial and only played one Delver. Punting again. Look at me go. I don't know if it's just how many decisions we make with this deck. But I make a lot of mistakes. They're going for cards in hand. Uh, Mana Leak's not doing a lot, so they can have that. This Karn is going to threaten to ultimate. Pop that. Sure. Not entirely sure what the opponent's going for at this point, as far as things in hand. I can tell what's going on over here. Sylvan scrying for the opponent. Gonna get another land, possibly a Tron land, and keep doing stuff. Maybe a Ghost Quarter and just go after our mana. That wouldn't be very bad. It's a land of our wastes. Well, black, green confirmed. Wouldn't be surprised to see a Fatal Push here. I am feeling very strongly... That I should have held up a Stubborn Denial, because Goyf is ferocious. There goes a Delver. So instead of countering something... Well, I mean, we would have countered the Karn, and then Fatal Push would have taken out the only Delver we played. So maybe this is somehow better? But not really? Gonna play this. Um... Goyf's a 6-7, but this has Death Touch. Perilous Voyage, Simic Charm, Vapor Snag, those would all be very good right now. I don't really want to crack this, because I very much want Delver Scry. But on the other hand, I'd rather Delver Transform, because that's what we really need. We're just in a terrible spot. Maybe I do prefer the Delver Scry so we could find a Bounce Spell to answer this. Oh, that's, an, that's a Magic Online promo. That's what that set symbol means. That's neat. Didn't know they had one of those. This one-two punch of you can't profitably attack, and if you don't attack, you're gonna lose. Really hurting right now. Think I'm... Ah. I don't know what I want to do. We could swing. We're actually post-combat at this point, so I should have thought this through earlier, but we could swing. They block with this. These two trade. We bolt the death touch token, and then they're down to a 3-3. Three -three with lifelink although we did have to two for one ourselves for the actually that's a three for one we give up two cards and they still have a card so our two cards do nothing essentially i'm gonna play mandrills uh, i'm gonna play around ghost quarter and grab an extra red source what do they have planeswalker artifact sorcery instant 
creature. Oh, we have a Simic Charm in the graveyard. Gonna leave that in case we find a Snapcaster Mage. Exile two lands. All right, we're gonna hold up Denial, Denial, or Denial Bolt. We don't care about sweeper effects because we have two ferocious denials. So we can counter Ugin, we can counter O Stone, we can counter maybe they're running damnation. I wouldn't, but maybe they are. This could just be a massive creature, in which case, oh geez. Is that another worm coil? It's a world breaker. Well that's pretty good. I'm gonna float red. That's a 5-7 with reach, which means Delver can no longer profitably attack. I think it's about time we scoop. Feels like it's about time that we scoop. I'd actually like to be able to cast and activate my own O-Stone at this point. They're going for the land destruction route. Yeah, I don't see us winning this match. Ah, uh, that's perfectly fine. I'd rather not cast that lightning bolt. Yep. We're not going to reveal anything off of this. We're going to scoop. Extraordinarily unlikely we win that game. So, green black Tron. I just played against this because I just finished off that previous league. Going to take out Snapcaster Mage. Two chart, of course, but we're probably bringing one back. Don't remember what I brought what I took out to bring that back just a little while ago. Does Simic Charm come out? No. Looks like I think Hexproof is worth it. It kind of is. It's also Reach, which is something. And a Spell Snare. What did I not cut? The two bolts. Stuff I want. Mountain. Blood Moons. Artifact Hate. Ceremonious Rejection. Alright, 7 for 7, and let's try to get this back in. Don't think I need to get Perilous Voyage back in. Bouncing O-Stone isn't the worst, but I don't feel like it's going to be that relevant. How are we going to get this chart of course in? What did I do last time? I do not remember. I took out Vapor Snag, I think, for it. I feel like I'd rather have Vapor Snag, though. Kind of interesting that... Probably an hour ago I made one decision and then now I'm making the complete opposite decision with basically nothing to support the difference. But maybe Chart of Course isn't as good against Tron as that first game made it seem like. Not this first game, the first game from the previous league, which was awesome and you should all watch it because the good guys won and the Tron Menace... May or may not have been the good guys. I don't want to actually spoil it, so we'll leave it at that. Maybe some people consider Tron the good guys. I don't know. It's possible. You do you. I don't want to cut any Blood Moons. Really want to run at least one chart, of course. Maybe we shouldn't be playing Mountain. But I really don't want to fall behind. Only 13 creatures makes cutting Mandrill seem bad. Cutting Scour seems awful. Maybe it's another Bolt? Tarfire? Size of the Goy feels relevant. Having the tar fire makes it easier to beat relics. Maybe a mana leak or a denial to get a counter? I could see that. We're boarding in one counter. Maybe we take out another. I mean, we took out Spell Snare, but that's not a great counter here. Maybe even just a shoal. Mana leak? Denial. Let's cut a denial. See what that's all about. We know for a fact that our opponent's running some very difficult to deal with creatures. Snap keep. Pop open those graveyards. Fetch. Shock. Delver of Secrets. Aggro. Get a steam vents. And that one. That's the key that gives up priority. Holding up Denial and Ceremonious Rejection to Hidden Expedition Map seems at least somewhat loose. Although, as I say that, the opponent plays out an Expedition Map. Because why wouldn't they? Vapor Snag, excellent. 
gonna get in here with the Aberration, and I'm also going to play out a Tarmogoyf. Although it is just a 1-2, but they can't Collective Brutality it. Given that Collective Brutality would put a Sorcery in the graveyard, and that's not good for the opponent. Uh, I think I'm gonna give up on Blood Moon mana, because I'd rather have double blue, and we definitely need green. To be fair, we could still get Blood Moon mana, I just don't think it's a very large concern at this point. Here's another Tron land. Alright, let's natural Tron it up. That's fine, doesn't matter. Put this in the graveyard. Grow that Goyf. Um, Mana Leak actually looks extremely good in this spot. We're gonna put a Sorcery in the bin. We're going to counter something, putting another thing in the bin. They're going to put the Expedition map. Denial's going to get turned on. I'm trying to figure out it, which of these I want first. I know I want both. Which do I want first? Um... Feel like it might be the Mana Leak? Yeah. Yeah, it's Mana Leak. Just in case they have back-to-back -back Worm Coil Engine. That's the play. Let's get in for five. Tempo. Tempo. You guys are cheering at home, right? I hope you're cheering at home. Just so you know, I'd cheer for you if I was at home and you were currently playing against Green Black Tron with a Tempo deck that probably plays Delver and Tarmogoyf because, I mean, Delver and Tarmogoyf. End of argument. <laughs> they do certainly have their detractors, but they're pretty good. I like them anyways. One mana, three, two with flying, and two mana. Right now it's a three, four. Just a moment ago it was a two, three. Sometimes it's even bigger. Now that's something we can counter with Stubborn Denial. Which of these is more restrictive? Denial also hits push. But Rejection also hits Worm Coil. We have Simic Charm for push. We're also in a position where we can get a non-ferocious Denial out of the hand, which doesn't seem that bad. Goyf's a 5-6. One point off lethal with the Simic Charm. We're not going to go for that. I'm going to hold up Mana Leak. Seems better. Also holding up Rejection, which seems fantastic. Go to the opponent. I think we took this. Knock on wood. I was a little dangerous. I'm not superstitious, but I mean, the EV on knocking on wood is just absurdly high. If there's something like even a 1% chance that the superstition is correct. So why not? What do we got? Thrag Tusk. Oh, we can't mana leak that. That's pretty good. We can Vapor Snag it, though, which will likely happen on the end step. They're going to have a 3-3. That's annoying. We could Simic Charm the 3-3 afterwards. What's this? An Oblivion Stone. Okay, so... The opponent played a Llanowar Waste this turn. They cast Thrag Tusk. Stuff happened. Oblivion Stone. They do not have mana up, and they don't have a way... To, they can't play a land. So we're going to bounce this. They're going to have a 3-3. We're going to bounce that. We're going to attack for 8. And then we win. Actually, we could have countered that anyways. Just because we have a Wooded Foothills on top of the deck. Which means next turn we could snag plus charm. But I mean, there's not much of a point. Return that. I like double checking my math when I go for lethal by tapping out. Seems like a good idea. The EV on that is very high too. Alright, we're gonna untap, we're gonna draw Wooded Foothills, we're gonna play the Wooded Foothills. We're gonna Vapor Snag this. And we still have Mana Leak up, and Ceremonious Rejection. Boom! That's fantastic, the opponent scoops, let's sideboard. That was fun. 
That was a lot of fun. I like when we get to play the tempo role, and I like it a lot. See, I'm conflicted, because tempo is, like, that. that's home for me. That's what I want to do. But I also really like the aggro control, less dedicated tempo decks that are able to pivot better. So it's like, do I want to go hard on tempo because tempo is great and that's absurd amounts of fun? Or do I want to play aggro control because the versatility is also absurd amounts of fun? I don't I just want a tempo deck that's also really good at playing the control role. Can I have that? I could probably have that. I think we're going to work on tuning to get to that spot in the metagame. A deck that can play tempo when it's up against, say, control or combo or mid-range game one at least. And then when it plays against aggro, it tries to go closer to aggro control. Probably going to be a lot harder to do game one because we're likely going to have... Stuff like Chart of Course that doesn't look very good against aggro decks. But I mean, Pitch to Shoal, it's something. And then post board, we can have the same kind of plan for mid-range decks. I guess that's kind of what I'm playing right now. Yeah, yeah, that, that is what I'm playing right now. I just want this deck to be better, and I want to make better plays. That's, that's what I really want. We're going to run this back, because I don't think there's anything wrong with the 60 we're playing here with respect to the 15 cards that are not currently in it. That hand is a stern mulligan. We have a Blood Moon that is far too slow, a Mandrills that is far too slow, a Goyf that probably will eventually be cast, a couple Mana Leaks that are in the very same boat, and a Stubborn Denial that we could do something with. I'm going to keep this. Reason being, we have a Visions. We might have to pitch that Visions... Oh, that's a hard choice. No. Worse for Mandrills, better for hitting land drops. Chromatic Star's fine. Not gonna give up my scry for that. Expedition map, I probably give up the scry for. We don't really need that. And this is the point where it really counts that we don't have a bobble on top. Alright, second Tron land. Oh, do you have natural Tron again? Like, completely natural? We could basically call it Ode to Tron. It's the natural musk of Tron. It's what Urza, that was Urza's thing. Oh yeah, we got wrecked. We got wrecked. Play a Karn and exile my island, please. Worm Coil. Well, if we had a Ceremonious Rejection, we'd probably still be in this. As is, we are definitely not playing Tempo here. I wonder if that was a mulligan. I don't know. What do you guys think? Leave a comment. Please let me know. Message me somewhere. Whatever you want to do, however you want to reach me. Let me know if you think that 6 was a keep, or if it was just too slow. Thought Scour. We're going to do that right now, because we might draw land. Okay, alright. Uh, Slam Hooting Mandrills. We also- Ah, oh. Flooded Strand. If this was a Scalding Tarn, we get a Stomping Ground. We cast this. Next turn we cast this. As is, we do not have that option available to us. So what do we do? I think it's Mandrills, but I really want to be able to Ancient Grudge this Worm Coil. Okay. So if they have more payoff cards, we're probably just extraordinarily dead. So what I'm going to do is not get the green source for the mandrills. I'm going to pray that the opponent draws extraordinarily poorly, the worst you could possibly draw, playing a deck like Tron that has extremely good top decks, mind you. And I'm going to hope that Ancient Grudge the Worm Coil, Bolt a Token, and we might get there. That's the play. Well, they have more payoff. Still don't have the rejection, which is fine. Notably, the Traverse list plays two rejection, which means we're more likely to see it. That's okay. 
We're not going to fetch yet because I want to maximize my chances of drawing a land. Come on, what do we got? What do we got? Oh, yeah. That is a nice reward. So we got to blow this up, right? This is the immediate threat. Karn is threatening to do unspeakable things to our mana, but this is the immediate threat. Uh, we're going to pass to the opponent because I would like to blank their combat step. We're going to get some lands. We're going to blow up a worm coil engine. That is going after the hand. That's perfectly fine. Mana leak looks pretty poor here. Might also end up giving up a hooting mandrels at some point. And let's fetch. What do we get? We can't draw both land and blood moon so i don't think blood moon man is a huge consideration but maybe it is at the same time that makes us easier to mana screw don't think i want to be easy to mana screw or at least color screw we're still pretty easy to mana screw <laughs> blow that up red green all right Worm coil down. See, we can do this. I mean, even if there's a 1% chance of us winning, I'm still going to make the best lines that I can. Because that's just what we do. Here's an Ugin. That's pretty good. That's going to bolt face, probably. All right. Tarmogoyf. So we play Tarmogoyf. They exile it with Karn, they bolt us with Ugin, we're super dead. What we have to do here, and this is a real doozy, we have to answer Worm, Worm, Ugin. We need to stop two of these three right now. If we play Goyf, we're dead, because we can only block one, and they can bolt us, and they can exile the Goyf, so this is gone. If we play Mandrills and then bolt one of these, they exile Mandrills, three, three, we're done. Get rid of both of these. If we Ancient Grudge one, bolt the other, they Ugin us, we go down to two, exile something with Karn, we can't answer Ugin, and then we're dead. But, that's still what we're gonna do. Gets us an extra turn. And it's the only thing that gets us an extra turn. So we're going to do it. If I'm the opponent, I'm probably exiling a land here. And bolting face with Ugin. Once again, we are super dead if they have payoff. But I mean, there was no doubt in that from the start. Alright, what do we got? They have a forest. So I don't know if keeping that 6 was good. So I'm not going to say this is another match we lost to misplays. But. We could have done better. We certainly could have. Oh, Cobru. I'm going to show that. Yeah, we get to show off Shoal and Chart. That's fantastic. They didn't Cobru. They just got Cobru mana in case they drew it, I guess. I'm still going to show off Shoal and Chart. Did we make any big misplays in the first? No, we won the first. We lost the second. No, we won the second. We lost the first. Did we make a lot of misplays in the first game? I cannot remember. Oh, yeah. Top deck of the century, something we can cast. Get out there, Delver. Get out there and be heard. Did we do anything bad in the first day? The first one was when they had Worm Coil and World Breaker. And I'm pretty sure we could have sped up our clock at least a little bit. But I'm not sure, and I don't remember the game that vividly. So... Oh, hey, they get to alt Ugin. That's exciting. We probably could have done something to win one of these two games that we lost. It's entirely possible we couldn't have, but I'm pretty confident I could play better somewhere. I'll probably end up rewatching this sometime soon. 
Ah, uh, looks like we're going to be 0-1 going into this league, but that's okay. Because we had some fun, and in game two, we did great things. The opponents taking a look at their hand, deciding what permanents to put into play. Those are some decent permanents. But at the same time, when the Tron player draws seven cards, I think you just have to assume that some of them are going to be really good. They swing. We GG's. And that's going to do it. Let's go to negative four. They're going to go to 44. And bam. If magic was me measured by score points, given the differential of life totals, our opponent won by 40. Which isn't a feat many can tote. Maybe Soul Sisters. They win by a lot when they win. Anyways, thank you all for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed watching this video. And I hope to see you in the next one.